prior to Windows Vista, if you wanted to do things like install an application or change your password or perform some other higher level administrative function on your computer, you had to be an administrator on that computer or have access as administrator. The Windows XP, almost everybody got local administrator access on their machine. And the problem is that it opens up a big hole for security issues. So in Windows Vista, something new was created called User Account Control. What this allowed you to do is to run as a normal user and only at the times when you would need that extra administrator access, the operating system would stop. It would say, we need your permission to continue to do some of these things. And you would have to provide the right credentials or provide the access for the operating system to do that. And in that way, you never knew if your OS was doing something without you knowing about it. So if you are a standard user, you can do things like use the network or burn a DVD or change your password, the things that you should, of course, have access to do if you're a standard user. But if you're an administrator, you may want to install an application. So if you try to install an application in Vista, it's going to pop up a message like this that says, we need your permission to continue. Can we install this application? If you want to install an ActiveX control in your browser, Windows is going to stop and prompt you for that. If you want to configure remote desktop, these are administrative functions. Some people, when they first started using this, were very taken aback. Why is the operating system stopping and popping up a window? And I must answer this window before it can continue. Well, that's because there are very serious security issues if applications, without asking you, can go install applications, can install App ActiveX controls, can make configuration changes to your computer. So it is a little bit of a problem for some people because they're constantly being prompted for these things. But there's a trade-off there between security and making sure that your system is going to run it, it, all the time without having any problems whatsoever on that. User account control, a new feature in Windows Vista. It's also available in Windows 7. The minimum requirements for Windows Vista are listed here. We have this broken down by processor, memory, disk space, the requirements for other disks, and the video. And you'll notice Windows Vista, very, at the very minimum, really only just needs an 800 megahertz machine with half a gig of RAM and 20 gigabyte hard drive uh, free and available on that hard drive. You also need a CD-ROM drive and at least some basic VGA graphics capabilities. Now, Microsoft breaks these things down into minimum requirements and recommended requirements. And generally, yes, you could run Windows Vista or any operating system with its minimum requirements. But generally speaking, you're not going to be very happy with performance. And that's why Microsoft puts out some recommended requirements. And you'll notice that these requirements are a little bit more beefy. You've got a 1 gigahertz processor as a minimum. And for Windows Vista Home Premium Business and Ultimate, they recommend at least a gig of RAM inside of the machine. 20 gig free on basic and 40 gig free on the others. A DVD-ROM drive, a little bit higher capability for the higher end systems for the recommended capabilities. And then the graphics cards that are in your computer, they recommend at least having 32 meg. And in the case of the other Windows versions, 128 megabytes of graphics memory on that graphics card itself. And as you get into the higher end capabilities of Windows Vista with Aero and using some of the user interface capabilities, you'll be glad that you have a little bit of extra umph in your video drive and your video card. And especially with that extra memory, it will really help you in a user interface perspective. Windows XP is one of the most prevalent operating systems that you'll run into. And just like Windows Vista, there are different versions of Windows XP available. Windows XP Home Edition, just like the Home Edition of Windows Vista, has some very basic capabilities. There's a version of Windows XP called the Media Center Edition. This is a server you might have in your house that's able to record television shows. You can consolidate your movies and DVDs into the device. You can store your pictures. It's a centralized media server for the home. And Windows XP Professional. It's probably the, the operating system will find the most on people's desktops. And it has everything from remote desktop and the ability to have multiple processors inside of your computer, all the way up to being able to encrypt individual files if you're using the NTFS disks and type of capabilities that really provide you some enhancements over a FAT32. We'll talk about NTFS and FAT32 in a later video. Windows XP requirements, much different than the Windows Vista. You can see for the minimum requirements, all we need is a 233 megahertz processor. 
with a, these days a paltry 64 megabytes of RAM. And you can see some of the other requirements on here, even 800 by 600 for the video. So a very basic low-end system. For the recommended requirements, it's up to at least a 300 megahertz processor running 128 megabytes of RAM. And you can start to see why Windows XP is still available and still used out there because you can support so many kinds of computers now with that. You can really have a very, very old computer and still be able to run Windows XP easily with what today might be considered some very basic and very fundamental hardware requirements. When you get into media center type requirements where you're storing a lot of video and a lot of pictures and a lot of music and you're having the system record programs while you're watching others, your requirements are very, very different than the entry level and basic requirements for XP that we were just looking at. And here's a good example of that. Windows XP Media Center's minimum requirements are a 1.6 gigahertz processor with at least 256 megabytes of RAM, a 60 gig hard drive, free space on that hard drive, and you can see just the basics in being able to have video, 1024 by 768 and a mouse and a keyboard. But if you are really going to do the media center properly, then you would max it out with a couple of physical CPUs in the device. You'd get a, a computer that has two physical CPUs in it. You'd up it all the way to 4 gig of RAM. Uh, you could have as much as 256 terabytes of hard drive space for a Windows Media Center machine. We usually don't have that in our homes. But media, the Media Center version of Windows XP will support 256 terabytes of hard drive space. A CD, a DVD-ROM drive is almost required in both of these. You really need that because that's the type of systems you'll be working with. With media, you need DVD. High resolution, and at the very high end, you've got remote control. You've got multiple tuner cards that you might put into your computer. There's a lot of things you can do with Media Center. And if you really wanted to max it out, you would need all of these extra capabilities and extra functionality for your hardware.